Hello guys and welcome to a special video for a very special game that's been packed with some of the most interesting tech PC gaming has to currently offer. We're going to break it all down, examine the tech, the visuals, performance and more. I'd like to thank Nvidia for giving us an early review copy so I can properly sink my teeth into it and share it with you guys. The game's been remastered with the latest version of RTX Remix, a modding platform that opens the doors for a lot of older games being brought to the modern era with very high quality textures, path tracing, and constantly new technologies. One very interesting new technology that makes its debut in this demo as a matter of fact is RTX Neural Radiance Cache, an AI-powered real-time radiance caching technology that more efficiently and accurately calculates indirect illumination and path tracing. This can lead to an increase in performance of up to 15% according to Nvidia. Let's put that to the test. For the making of this video, I used my RTX 4090 with the Ryzen 9800X3D at 4K resolution. I've set DLSS to performance, the transformer model with ray reconstruction, but I will show you later the game running at native 4K. It's crazy demanding. DLSS multi-frame generation is also available if you have an RTX 5000 GPU. And I'm also using the ultra graphical preset, which is the highest preset available. With these settings, we're getting over 76 FPS and Neural Radiance Cache or NRC is enabled by default. And thankfully, we have access to the RTX Remix developer menu. We can make a lot of tweaks here, guys. You can make the game even more demanding if you wanted to. I wouldn't suggest messing with a lot of these settings if you don't know what you're doing. But disabling NRC and going with the Reister GI method, we go from 76 FPS to 68 FPS. So by using this real-time AI-powered method of calculating indirect illumination, we gain around 11, 10 to 11 percent, which is actually really nice. Another really cool feature I've wanted to examine the impact of is shader execution reordering, which Nvidia introduced with RTX 4000 GPUs aimed at reducing the performance cost of ray tracing. And if we disable it, we go from 74 FPS all the way down to 55 or 56 FPS or so. So that is a gain of around 30% just by making these architectural improvements on hardware. Another interesting feature in this build is RTX skin, which is subsurface scattering on skin, which simulates light penetrating through the skin and illuminating it essentially. And you can see this in the head crap as light hits translucent skin, you can see it illuminated and passing through. We saw a similar technique to this used in Indiana Jones. I went over it in a separate video, but on plants. And it just sort of adds to the whole atmosphere and all the other effects. Uh, speaking of which, we also have RTX volumetrics, a technique that tracks how light interacts with fog and smoke to simulate atmospheric depth. If you've watched any horror or suspense movies, such effects are common to immerse the user into an experience. Games tend to overdo it sometimes, and hey, it comes down to taste, but with the RTX Remix developer menu, you can fine tune all this and even add dust particles if you wanted to, which I think it's actually pretty cool. But the level at which they've went to to remake Half-Life 2 RTX, the multiple atmospheric effects, the path trace lighting, and especially replacing the very dated textures with very high quality assets, is truly impressive and it takes a timeless classic game like this to another level. We'll focus more on the high resolution textures in just a minute, although you are looking at them, but I wanted to focus a bit on the lighting in this game because it's absolutely sublime. It just looks right. It makes the high resolution textures have three dimensional depth. It doesn't just look like a quick swapped out job that someone did over, I don't know, a few months. It, it, it just looks right. But we have a good opportunity here to separate indirect and direct lighting and see how it affects the scene. We can go in the RTX Remix menu and disable indirect illumination. And what you'll see is the direct lighting now without the indirect illumination. And immediately you can see how important indirect illumination is. What is indirect illumination? Well, it's light that bounces off a surface and illuminates the surroundings. So it can pass off some of the color that's in the surface and you can see here now how the high resolution texture, actually, you can see 
every individual bullet hole where the concrete's been cut up above us. And the scene looks overall a lot darker without the indirect illumination, which makes sense because our light source is hitting the surface and it stops there. Nothing else is bouncing off. And you can see how it just doesn't look right. It looks like something's missing because it is. I particularly liked how these nails actually look because with the light directly above us, the shadows look just so pronounced. Although you can see how they diffuse as the shadow travels down further and further. And if we re-enable indirect illumination, we now get that bounce lighting affecting and adding a bit more light into the scene. And you can still see those shadows as well, by the way. And this type of paint is a uh, paint that's normally used in like factories. It's got a uh, very high reflective properties in it. So it kind of makes sense. And to touch back on the RTX volumetrics, you can see here how placing this blade over the light source affects the direct lighting, indirect illumination, but also causes the shadow to disperse over the fog and also the floor. Very cool. This has to be some of the best lighting that I've ever seen in a game. Perhaps even the best example of path tracing. And if you've followed my channel for a while, you'll know that I'm a pretty big fan of ray tracing. Ever since I played Control for the first time on my 6800 XT over four or five years ago, I was blown away with the reflections and the ability to get even more immersed into the experience and to see that this is where we'd be four or five years later. I mean, it's truly mind blowing and all done with RTX Remix, which is a modding platform anyone can use. The high resolution textures, the different materials and the reflections that add depth and realism to those materials is the other few ingredients that bring everything together in this very well done remake because the extent that they've gone to actually replace these textures is truly impressive. And the reflective properties add a lot of depth and realism to the different materials. Even if we just look at this can of paint, something that we all probably have in the house. If you look at the label, not only is it very high quality, very high resolution, but you see the label reflect as glossy paper wood or the lid, the metal lid. It's rough. It's got blemishes. It has reflective properties. It looks a lot better. It looks about what you would expect to see. I was kind of blown away by the gun and just how good it looks, how it reflects the light. It looks like brushed aluminum, brushed steel, gun metal, whatever you want to call it. And then you also have the glove and the hand overall it just it looks so good and you can even see the little green light on the iron sight reflect on top of the gun as well it's so nice to truly appreciate how good these assets look you have to compare them to the old ones and that's what we're going to do before we wrap up the video and take a quick look at the performance as well so check this one out guys it's truly mind-blowing an important thing to keep in mind, guys, is that even though you're looking at the old assets right now, the path trace lighting is still on because we cannot turn that off. Only looking at the original game would make that possible.
Well, guys, these are just a few of the many, many examples I have because I was just so blown away by the differences. We could sit here all day, but you can look at them yourselves and you'll be just as amazed, I bet. Before we wrap it up, though, I just wanted to take a look at the technologies that make it possible for us to be able to play and enjoy these experiences at playable frame rates. What you guys are looking at is Half-Life 2 RTX at native 4K ultra graphical preset on an RTX 4090 and we're getting around 25 FPS. All of these ray tracing effects of this caliber are very demanding, despite shader execution reordering and neural radiance cache helping out to lighten the load. Now, thankfully, upscaling technologies like the LSS4 transformer model have evolved so much that dropping to performance mode can look as good as native, lifting us to above 60 FPS, and toggling on DLSS frame generation on top can allow me to enjoy this experience at a very smooth 120 FPS on my OLED TV. If you had a Blackwell GPU, you could enable multi-frame generation to fully saturate your new 240Hz 4K OLED monitor. Although I don't have one to show you what that feel like, I hear it's pretty good. The majority of the footage captured you guys saw in this video was captured on a second PC with a capture card and a 60 FPS lock, ultra graphical preset, and DLSS performance. I did this so the footage was nice and smooth for the video, for your enjoyment, and I very much enjoyed it too. Yes, it is a demanding remake, but you could lower the preset or go in the RTX Remix developer menu and make a ton of tweaks to make the game easier or even harder to run. The choice is yours. To wrap things up then and share my thoughts on this free demo, well, I can't wait for the full release. <laughs> Experiences like this is what truly sets PC gaming apart from any other gaming platform out there. You get to experience the bleeding edge of gaming technology and the fact that it's a remake or a remaster of one of the most iconic games ever created makes it that much better. As a fan of ray tracing, this represents how far the technologies come, from reflective glass all the way to path traced lighting, reflections, volumetrics, materials, subsurface scattering on skin, and so much more. It also shows the possibilities and what can be achieved with tools like RTX Remix in the hands of a dedicated team of enthusiasts. It's tools like this and a rich modding culture that also sets PC gaming apart, making it the best platform for preserving and modifying games. That's it from me though. Please give the video a like if you feel I've earned it and consider subscribing. Follow me on X and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.